Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to the shop. Today we're going to be talking about saws, hand saws, back saws, carcass saws, and as such. How do you actually get these to start, especially with these big ones. They have huge teeth and they just like to dig in and just getting them started is a pain. As well as we'll be talking about a few things of how to cut a perfectly straight line. This should be kind of an interesting one. Even if you have been woodworking for a long time, a lot of this information is things that's just good to brush up on occasionally because sometimes it's just good to go back to the basics. So today let's dive in and take a look at how to start a saw. And white oak is a very difficult wood to start, especially into the end grain because it is a ring porous wood. All of the pores are in all of these rings, so the blade tends to catch into them and hold down and doesn't release because it's still a harder wood. So this is a good way to describe and show how it's going to work. We're going to be using a carcass saw. Uh, this is a back saw with a cross cut tooth. It's probably the saw that's used the most in my shop and this is what I usually try and teach people to start with because it's just easier to control. But we are going to be showing the worst case possible situation where we're going to be using a full handsaw. This has five points per inch which makes it big honking teeth and they catch into the wood and they do not let go. And this is a pain to start, especially if you're starting at a corner, every tooth wants to catch as you're going forward. So we're going to start with the back saw and then move on to the handsaw. The first thing you need to learn is how to hold a saw. Number one, you don't put all the fingers in here. This is bad form. It squishes everything in and the handle is never quite big enough. One finger goes out straight forward and these other two fingers here, those are pretty much worthless. The only thing that's important is this finger and then the back of the hand where it rests on this horn. This horn here is what holds up the entire weight of the saw. And this finger here then becomes the fulcrum that everything moves on. So if you think about it that way, you're holding the entire weight of the saw back here on your palm, and that is holding up the weight of the whole plate sticking out here. And what that's useful for is you can actually move the saw above the work without touching it. And this is usually the first thing I tell people to do. Learn to move the saw above the work and control the saw so it's not biting into the work. Just hold the weight off of the saw, keep all the weight back here on your wrist. The next thing to look at is your other hand. So we have the saw and the saw will be riding on the work, but this other hand is incredibly important. And I use two fingers here and I'll pinch the corner of the wood. And what happens is when I pinch these two fingers together, it pushes the saw away. And when I release them out, it pulls the saw back. And so I can use this motion here to adjust the side to side of the saw. I can have all the weight back here on my wrist. I can have this hand controlling the side to side motion of the saw. And so this hand just has to think about driving the saw forward. So what we want to do is normally pinch it here and practice with it sliding on your thumbnail. Now I'm going to move this finger out of the way just so you can see a little bit better what's happening. And I want to practice letting it, my thumbnail slide on that plate and I want to hold the saw off of the work just so it's nicking and scratching. And I'm really just trying to keep it above the work, not letting it cut, letting all the weight of the saw be back here on this horn. And then once you get good at holding it just above the work, then you just let a little bit of the weight down and just let it slide. And before you know it, you've got a track that it's riding in. And now you can go to town because you've gotten the saw established and it's much easier at that point. So think about adjusting the saw with this hand and keeping the weight off the hand so it's just above the work. Let the weight of the saw rest on it and then let it go to town. Once it's been established, then you can put a little bit of force into it and do the work. The very same thing goes with this big hand saw. We want to put it on here, rest it in, but with these big teeth, if you let any amount of the weight of the saw catch, it just holds in there and I can't push this forward. It's just locked in place. But if I can let this hand do the controlling of the side to side motion, and just as before, I'm going to put all the weight back here on my wrist. I'm going to let that actually hold it up and everything's balancing between this finger being the fulcrum and the wrist being the weight. And this wrist is going to hold up all of this weight. And we're going to hold all of this up off of the work. So I can let my thumb control the side to side motion. I can put the weight back on my wrist and I can just let it slide over the top, holding all the weight up so that the saw isn't gouging into the work. Let it scratch the top until eventually you'll get a kerf running. And now the saw is going to town. 
One of the biggest problems people have is they put their force into the saw and they're trying to push the saw into the work. If you are pushing the saw down, then you are putting too much work into this and you're not letting the saw do its own work. So learning to let the saw do its own work and just letting your arm do the motion of moving it back and forth, it was amazing how accurate and smooth things can be. Now this is all fine and good for going right across the top of a flat surface. What if you wanna start the saw on the corner of an edge? So it's often that I have to cut an angle down at 45. And so what I'll do is I'll put the board into the vise so that I'm still cutting vertical because it's much easier to cut vertical than to turn my whole body and cut at an angle. Then number two, just as before, I'm gonna use my fingers and pinch it. And I'm going to put that plate so it's running right on that corner. I, again, I'm going to lift up all the weight so it's back here on my wrist. And I'm just going to keep the saw above the cut. Let it start scratching in develop a little bit of a nick there. And I'm just gonna be putting a little bit of nick right on that corner. Once that corner gets a little bit developed and the saw gets in place, then I can start bringing it back along that line. I'm still holding the weight up here. I'm just letting the saw scratch into the work. I'm not putting any force down in. I'm not even putting half the weight of the saw into it. I'm just holding up the saw so that I can control it. And now I have an established cut and we can go to town. It's even the exact same thing with the big handsaw and these big teeth. I'm going to use my thumb to let it guide it into place. I'm gonna let the teeth just nick holding it up until I establish a little bit of an edge there. And then once I get that blade in, I'm gonna start working it back all the way along the corner. Then I'm established all the way across. Then I'm established all the way across, and we can go to town. And every now and then you may be in a cut, and suddenly, let's see if I can do this, the saw jams in and I can't push it forward. What's happened is the teeth have dug down in, and what I wanna do is lift the saw up, again, put the weight back on my hand, don't put the weight on the teeth, and then lift it up a little bit and just let it scratch. And then it will go to town again. Now a lot of you are gonna notice when I'm starting the saw, I'm using about four or five inches in the middle of the saw here. And some people do like to start it out here on the very tip and get it going on here. And that's why a lot of saws, you'll actually see small teeth out here, making it a little bit easier to start with the small teeth. The problem with starting it out on the tip with a big handsaw is that you're a little farther away. Now you can do it because your thumb is controlling it, but it takes a little bit more skill to do that. And I find it easier for most people to learn to do it back here, closer to the hand where you have a little bit more control on it. But you might find you're one of those people who like to do it out here on the tip. Now you're gonna hear a lot of people that say, ooh, you need to use the whole length of the saw. And yes, when I'm cutting a board, I'm trying to use the whole length of the saw. But when I'm starting it, I'm just going to be working in a small area rather than using the whole thing. And the reason for that is it's easier to control the saw just moving it with a little bit of motion as opposed to moving the whole motion. The more you move your arm, the easier it is for it to go off track and do weird things. So staying with a small portion will make it a little easier to control right off the bat. Once it's established then, then use the whole saw because you want to wear all the teeth down at the same pace so you're not wasting more of the saw having to sharpen the whole saw even though there's just a little bit dull in the middle. Now a couple other tips. When you're cutting into the saw, it is natural for you to try and push the saw down into the work. But if you are forcing the saw down into the work, you're not letting the saw do what it needs to do. And a lot of times it's going to start jumping and doing weird things. If you ever resawed a wide board, you might realize that you are on the line on this side and you're on the line on this side, but when you open it up in the middle, the saw has veered out of course, even though it's on the line on both sides. And the reason for that is usually because you are forcing the saw, and so you're putting pressure into the saw, and the saw is then bending inside of the cut. So what you need to do when you're resawing is let the saw do the work. Do not put any weight on the saw. Let the saw's weight do its work, and it will track nicely down as long as it's been set up well. The saw will do a really nice line and give you a clean cut even over a large surface on a board. And then that leads into the natural body mechanics that you have to learn. Keep the saw 
in line with the arm, in line with the elbow, in line with the shoulder. So when you're sawing, the whole shoulder and elbow and everything is running in a nice smooth surface. If your elbow goes out of line, then your saw is gonna start doing one of these numbers and your cut isn't going to be straight anymore. You need to make sure that your saw is all the way in line, all the way up to your shoulders, so you're getting a nice clean stroke all the way in here. Keep your body out of the way, because if your body gets in the way of the cut, then you're doing this. If you're too far out of the way, then you're gonna be doing this. <laughs> so it's one of those things you just have to learn. The whole saw needs to be in line with the arm, needs to be in line with the shoulder. The weight needs to be back here on your wrist. Be able to hold up this whole saw between your middle finger and your wrist here. This whole thing should be able to balance very easily on this, and you should be able to hold the weight up as you're cutting. Put all these things together, and you might be surprised at how easy it is to start a saw. Even with these really big teeth, it can go very easily. So this is kind of one of those back to basics things. Whether you've been using a saw all your life, or you're brand new to it, it's one of these things that's good to refresh occasionally. Remember, body mechanic can change over time, so it's good to think about that. Make sure you're remembering to hold the weight with your wrist, you're not letting the saw dig into the work, you're not pushing the saw down, you're actually holding it up out of the work so that only a portion of the weight of the saw is actually going into it. Keep all those things in mind, and it's amazing what can be done with the simple, handy handsaw. So this has been a, a fun video for me. I like going back to these basic topics every now and then. If you like this, please let me down down below. I'd love to hear that. Also, there are many, 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 many other ways of starting a saw, and you'll hear all sorts of other methods of doing that out there. It doesn't mean that any one is right or wrong. It's just there's different ways of doing it. So be willing to experiment and try new things. And if you have a method that works really well for you, let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to read that. So thanks for watching the video. I think that'll about do it for today. I do want to say a huge thank you to all the patrons on Patreon and those who have become members here on Facebook over on the other uh, Wood by Wright channel. That does mean a lot and it really keeps us going here. So thank you for that. If you'd like to help out with Patreon, there is a link down below. And thanks for helping out. I think that'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Oh yeah? I saw what you did there. <laughs>